Today I am going to explain how you can guarantee your own place on a domestic abuse perpetrators program known as the DAP as you submit your C100 application for child arrangements through the family court. What follows is a simple scenario which is based on the fictional characters that I use on my family court training courses. The court is to consider a safeguarding allegation by the respondent mother, Abigail Groves, who alleges that six months ago, before separation, she was pushed to the floor by her husband, Matthew Groves. The incident was seen by their five-year-old daughter, Sandy, whilst their eight-year-old son, Daniel, was up in his room playing on the Xbox. Mrs Groves makes further allegations that she has been verbally abused over a period of 12 months leading up to the separation. There has been no contact between Matthew Groves and the children for three months, so he has applied to the court. What we will examine in this blog are all the wrong moves that Mr. Groves will make, which will almost certainly guarantee himself a seat on a domestic abuse perpetrators program. But before I do, as always, let's run my excellent introduction. I am Philip Kedge, the director of the Mackenzie Friend UK Network and founder of the national campaign of hashtag light not hate, removing lawyers from family court to prevent harm to children. I am a retired police chief inspector and have been a Mackenzie Friend layperson for over a decade. In my blogs, my views and opinions are entirely my own. Finally, please take this opportunity to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell. Remember folks, this is a fictional scenario. Okay, so the allegation is that the mother suffered domestic violence when just prior to the separation, she was violently pushed to the floor. Other allegations are made of verbal abuse during the last 12 months of the relationship. Mr. Groves denies the allegation of violence, stating that she tripped over a chair as she came towards him, but acknowledges that there were frequent rows during the last 12 months of the relationship with raised voices and words said by both parties, but never in the presence of the children, he says. The court applies directions 12J and there is a fact finding on the allegations. This is so important to understand. During the fact finding, the judge will be seeking to determine Mr. Groves' attitude and understanding in relation to domestic abuse. This is irrespective of whether he accepts or denies the allegations. Does Mr. Groves recognise that a parent shouting and swearing at the other is domestic abuse? Is he sensitive and understanding to the fact that shouting and swearing in the presence and hearing of a child is child abuse? Does he understand the impact of domestic violence on a parent, particularly in the sight and hearing on the child to be deeply traumatic and emotionally harming to a child. Finally, does Mr. Groves acknowledge that even if a child was not directly exposed to domestic abuse, let's say they were in another room, that the ongoing tensions, acrimony and a toxic home environment would still be harmful to a child. So what does the judge think in relation to Mr. Groves? 
In the case of Mr Groves, the judge considers that throughout the hearing and in giving his evidence, that he is showing a very limited understanding of domestic abuse and the impact it has on both Abigail and the children. He has minimised the domestic verbal abuse, stating that the children will hear worse comments in a playground. He stated that many couples fight and these things happen in a long-term relationship and that you can't blame one parent for a toxic home environment. After hearing the evidence, the judge on balance of probability gives a judgment that Mr Groves did push Mrs Groves to the floor and that on several occasions verbally abused Mrs Groves in the hearing and presence of the children. These findings of fact are now even more concerning because during the hearing Mr Groves demonstrated a lack of awareness of the issues around domestic abuse and violence in relation to the children and Mrs Groves. The judge orders CAFCAS to do a Section 7 report and in the interim orders there to be no direct contact between the children and Mr Groves. He is allowed a phone call once a week and to send a letter once a month. The next hearing is set for three months time. Mr Groves is not off to a good start. As part of the Section 7 report, the CAFCAS officer visits Mr Groves to again explore his attitudes towards domestic abuse and violence. Let me explain. When it comes to risk factors, CAFCAS will consider two types of risk known as static risk factors and dynamic risk factors. Static risk factors are incidents which have happened in the past and therefore cannot be changed. In this case, the findings of the court in relation to the verbal abuse and pushing Abigail to the floor are static risk factors. It has been determined by a court that they happened. The dynamic risk factors examines a person's attitude and ability to change, how open they are to self-reflection on their behaviour, how amenable are they to seeking support and to change their behaviour, do they recognise the impact that their behaviour has on their ex-partner and the children. The examination of both static risk factors and dynamic risk factors using a number of tools is critically important to how CAFCAS is likely to move forward and provide recommendations to the court. During the CAFCAS interview, Mr Groves doesn't accept the findings of fact and again shows little insight into his understanding of domestic abuse and violence. He blames Abigail for the toxic home environment. He states that Daniel didn't even see anything so that was not a problem and that Sandy was only upset for a short time. She was fine and bounced back. He explains to the officer that the children hear arguments on the television, even on EastEnders, that Abigail is addicted to. It's normal. They understand that parents argue we don't live in the 1960s. He states again that all couples argue in front of their kids and that it was normal to tell the CAFCAS officer you don't go and take their kids away. Unsurprisingly, CAFCAS conclude their Section 7 report confirming the judge's observations that the father still denies the allegations, has no or little insight into domestic abuse and violence, 
shows no contrition or ability to reflect on his own behavior, is not open to change, and demonstrates no personal responsibility for his actions, placing all the blame on Abigail and minimizing events in relation to the children. Kafkas recommends that the father attends a domestic abuse perpetrators program with no direct contact with the children until it is successfully completed. Well, you can imagine on receiving the Section 7 report, Mr Groves is not very happy. Indeed, he is outraged. He considers that he is being alienated by Kafkas from his children and that the family court is corrupt. In his mind, he is a hands-on, down-to-earth, fantastic father. Kafkas are clearly man-haters. Everything he reads on the Kafkas are criminals type of group forums is true. He is going to fight back. He is going to expose Kafkas, the courts and his ex. The war is on and he's going straight to a lawyer to fight his corner and to put right what is clearly a totally incompetent and outrageous report. The judge will get to see it for what it is when he walks into court with his barrister. The barrister will crucify the Kafkas report and it will get ripped up. He can't wait. Let's take a quick breather. I consulted the Urban Dictionary to define the behavior of a man who is highly arrogant, cocky, self-opinionated, and egotistical. And this is what it said. I kid you not, it stated a man who is swinging his dick. Please be clear. These are not my words. I am only stating them in the context of my research. So at the next hearing, Mr. Groves is pumped up and out for a fight. He has a barrister who is going to help him swing his dick. Let's see how the scenario plays out. In court, the judge listens to the position of Mrs. Groves and listens to the dick-swinging representations of Mr. Groves' barrister about the outrage of the report, the fantastic dad Mr. Groves is, and the fact that there must now be contact with his children, as this is in their best interests. The judge then turns to the Kafkas officer, who then quickly and metaphorically takes hold of Mr. Groves' very small kahunas, which are small because he is failing to man up to his responsibilities, and castrates him. The judge, as predicted, entirely agrees with the Kafkas report and orders Mr. Groves off to a domestic abuse perpetrators program with no direct interim contact until a review hearing in three months time to see how he is getting on. Mr. Groves leaves the court, not only having been metaphorically castrated, but with his once swinging dick now firmly between his legs and around 5,000 pounds in legal debt. The barrister is of course delighted because his wife wants a Gucci handbag for her birthday and a holiday in the Bahamas, which Mr Groves has just paid for. The barrister says in his parting comment, if there is anything else that I can help you with, don't hesitate to get back in touch. So let's conclude. Where did Mr. Groves go wrong? Well, honestly, if you can't work that out for yourself, having watched this blog, then perhaps there is no hope. And if you are indeed like Mr. Groves and acting like Mr. Groves, then perhaps you do need to attend a domestic abuse perpetrators program to help 
you to better understand the issues involved. Remember, you can't beat the system. What more can I say?